In the wise words of Desiree, money don't make my world go round, I'm reaching out to a higher ground. But the same cannot be said of WWE, where money is very much an integral part of its history. From Vince McMahon buying out his competition in 2001, to the constant obsession with creating a marketable megastar. But we're not just talking about real money. We're talking about metaphorical money as well, specifically money in the bank. Except the money is a contract and the bank is a briefcase, obviously. We've already ranked every money in the bank ladder match, but now it's time to talk about what happens next. In case you're new to WWE or enjoy having things explained to you on YouTube that you already know, the money in the bank contract grants its holder a world title shot for one year. Here's the catch, it can be cashed in at any time. Some WWE superstars are actually quite nice about this, and announce their cash-in date ahead of time. But let's be honest, most wait until their target is tired or beaten down, even the baby faces. Even the bloody baby faces! Disgraceful! So without further ado, I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com, and this is every single Money in the Bank cash-in, ranked from worst to best. Join us! Number 21, Baron Corbin. In our previous Money in the Bank ranking, we described Baron Corbin as the kid who takes war Warhammer too seriously. He clearly took great pleasure in ruining everyone else's fun, winning the briefcase at the expense of several fan favourites such as AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. But his cash-in was a different story altogether, and was maybe the worst thing that has ever happened to the Lone Wolf. Apart from that time a bus ran over his army of space marines. Look Baron, there's a time and a place to cash in your title shot, a Smackdown main event between Jinder Mahal and John Cena isn't it. Maybe put your feet up backstage and see what happens next week. Corbin ran out and nailed Cena with the briefcase before preparing to take the title from WWE Champion Jinder Mahal. But Cena distracted him from the apron, allowing Jinder to grab a roll up and retain the belt in seconds. It was so sudden and so out of the blue and did absolutely nothing for either Corbin or Jinder. One looked stupid, the other lucky. But at least Baron got a big win over Cena at the next pay-per-view. Oh wait, no, John beat the absolute hell out of him, let's move on. Number 20, Damian Sandow. Sometimes WWE book an established main eventer to win the briefcase, but things get a lot more interesting when it's given to an up and comer. It's hard to imagine now, but once upon a time, that man was Damian Sandow. Sandow won the briefcase by betraying tag partner Cody Rhodes. That would teach Cody the value of ruthlessness, which led him to joining the Bullet Club, which led to the establishment of All Elite Wrestling. So in a way, you could say that Damian Sandow is the father of the entire All Elite movement. On the other hand, you could say that's ridiculous. It's your choice, but back to the cash-in. We mocked Corbin for cashing in while John Cena was in the arena, while Sandow tried to get one over on the big guy directly. Not that big guy. He attacked Cena at the beginning of Raw, battering his injured arm with the briefcase and a steel chair. This led to a fairly long match, at least by cash-in standards, but Cena was able to overcome the odds and retain his title. I know, we couldn't believe he won either. Number 19, John Cena. We've already talked about the foolishness of cashing in on Big Match John, but what do you do if you're cashing in as Big Match John? Every wrestler has strengths and weaknesses, and you'd think that Cena's strengths would make him an unstoppable force with briefcase in hand. Those strengths being the absolute inability to be pinned or submitted ever. But Cena's one cash-in attempt resulted in failure, and that's because of his big weakness, being a bloody nice guy. Yes, when Cena's not screwing Rey Mysterio out of his only WWE Championship reign, or beating up a defenseless Michael Cole, our John's just a really lovely bloke. If he wasn't too proud to cash in on a weakened opponent, he'd be a 17 times champion now, and Ric Flair fans would be inconsolable. Instead, Cena arranged the match ahead of time, challenging CM Punk on the 1000th episode of Raw. It was a lose-lose situation. If Cena won, all of Punk's momentum would be instantly sapped, and his excellent title run would be over. But if Punk managed to retain, you could bet your bottom dollar it would be via a screwy finish. That's exactly what happened, as Big Show ran in to blast Cena for the DQ, with the champ trapped in an STF and about to tap out. It was the first failed cash-in, and even though it was probably wiser than putting the belt back on Cena, it certainly felt like a deflating finish. Number 18, Braun Strowman. 
Remember when Braun Strowman was the shining light of Raw? The Monster Among Men was on the roll of his career, dominating opponents and trashing backstage areas like a gigantic PG Steve Austin. It looked as though Strowman was going to cash in on the winner of the feud between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, a decision that would have kept him a popular anti-hero in the eyes of most fans. Instead, when Roman won the Universal title at SummerSlam, WWE decided to turn Strowman heel. They even gave him a pair of henchmen in the form of Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, but it was never explained quite why a seven-foot man bear would need backup. This heel turn took away all of the momentum that Braun had been building for over a year and led to a pretty uninspiring cash-in attempt. The match itself was a fun one, with Reigns and Strowman clashing inside Hell in a Cell, but it had one of the worst finishes of the year, if we pretend that Crown Jewel never happened at least. Brock Lesnar rushing in to cause a no contest. A no contest in a Hell in a Cell match? What would Mick Foley think? Actually, he was the special guest referee, and he couldn't see a thing because he'd been pepper sprayed by Paul Heyman, probably for the best. Number 17, Alberto Del Rio. The summer of 2011 was an incredible time to be a wrestling fan for both good and bad reasons. CM Punk cut his famous pipe bomb promo before walking out of the company with the WWE Championship. Many would argue that he returned too soon, but the storyline was still rolling along in a positive direction, and a rematch with Cena was booked for SummerSlam. Then, somewhere backstage, Vince McMahon hit a big red button marked Randomizer, and everything got a bit weird. Punk won the match even though Cena's foot was on the rope, with special guest referee Triple H counting the fall anyway. Then Punk was attacked by Kevin Nash of all people, despite Big Kev having no prior connection to the storyline. That left the door open for Del Rio to pin a weakened Punk, becoming WWE Champion. But amongst all the chaos, Alberto's cash-in really felt like an afterthought. The summer of Punk somehow turned into Punk vs Triple H, then into Triple H vs Nash, which wasn't the most obvious direction, we have to admit. But Del Rio's cash-in is generally seen as the moment the angle started to turn sour, and even though that's not his fault, it does have an impact on its ranking here. Also, he beat Punk with an Enziguri. Who wins their first world title with an Enziguri? Oh, weird. Number 16, Carmella. Carmella's time with the briefcase was riddled with controversy. There's the fact that she had to win it twice because WWE decided to have James Ellsworth win the first ever Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. There's the fact that she tried to cash in about 50 different times, only to get foiled time and time again like Elmer Fudd. And there's also the fact that she beat Charlotte Flair, who had just ended Asuka's undefeated streak at WrestleMania, thereby making bloody Asuka seem like just another member of the SmackDown roster. I'll calm down, sorry. So why isn't it further down our list? Well, as it turns out, the cash-in itself was a pretty good moment, taking place on the SmackDown after WrestleMania 34. It summed up the energy and chaos of these shows, combining a surprise debut with a shock title change. The Iconics were called up from NXT and beat down champion Charlotte, allowing Carmella to finally cash in. It was an important moment in front of a hot crowd, and even though her title reign wasn't particularly good, I don't think that was really Carmella's fault. She visibly improved in the ring over the course of 2018, and even though her reign was blighted by bad booking, she clearly rose to the occasion. Wow, that was quite a serious point. I'll be silly again now, I promise. Number 15, Jack Swagger. Several members of Cultaholic were in attendance when Jack Swagger dethroned John Morrison to become the five-star wrestling champion, making him not only the king of our hearts, but a free citizen of Newcastle and the surrounding towns. But even though we were there for the biggest night of Swagger's career, we sadly weren't present for the moment it all began, his first world title win. Swagger may be one of the more forgotten briefcase holders over the years, but we have to give him some credit. On the Raw after WrestleMania 26, he almost cashed in on real-life Megazord John Cena, but unlike Damien Sandow, he actually realized that it was a bad idea. Swagger decided to switch brands, showing up the next night on SmackDown to take Chris Jericho's World Heavyweight title. It wasn't the most exciting cash-in ever, but it did get the job done, although much of the credit must actually be given to Edge, who attacked Y2J beforehand. Swagger was all too happy to accept the easy victory, although you couldn't tell from his emotionless celebration. Maybe he knew that his title reign was going to be a bit rubbish. Number 14, Kane. Kane's had a long and storied career, but one thing that's remained pretty constant is that he absolutely does not mess about. When Miz wanted to beat up Shane McMahon, he challenged him to a Falls Count Anywhere match at WrestleMania and ended up losing. When Kane wanted to beat up Shane McMahon, he clipped a set of jumper cables to his crotch and he shocked his balls off. Once again, Kane does not mess about. So, can you guess Kane's strategy when he won the Money in the Bank briefcase? That's right, he did not mess about. The Big Red Machine waited just 49 minutes 
minutes to cash in his title shot on an exhausted Rey Mysterio. It was supposed to be a heelish move, with the bigger man cashing in on an underdog champion. Not only that, but Rey had just defended against future five-star wrestling champion Jack Swagger, so he'd obviously been pushed to the limit. Instead, however, people loved it. Maybe because they were still annoyed by Kane's one-day reign in the Attitude Era. We've ranked this cash-in fairly low on our list because it wasn't the most spectacular moment and it didn't elevate a popular new star, but it did finally give Kane a meaningful world title reign and maybe that's more important, in a way. Number 13, Sheamus. As WWE fans, we often feel like we know better than the company. And even though that can often feel pretty close to the truth, occasionally something happens to remind us that maybe we don't always know what's best. When Roman Reigns won his first world title, defeating Dean Ambrose in the final of a tournament for the vacant belt, the smarkier sections of the internet were not happy. WWE's Golden Boy had finally been given the championship, and it seemed as though a mega long reign was imminent. So when Sheamus cashed in seconds later, leaving Roman lying in a confession, Betty strewn ring, social media exploded with delight. Everyone was quick to laugh at Reigns' misery. It was like the most popular kid in school had dropped his tray at lunchtime. Like many cash-ins, it was an exciting moment on its own, but the wider circumstances were far from ideal. Despite winning the briefcase several months earlier, Sheamus had never been built up to main event status. A couple of hours before cashing in, he'd been part of a losing Survivor Series team, going down to the classic trio of Ryback, Kalisto, and Jey Uso. That's a dream lineup to rival the shield if I've ever seen one. A frustrating transitional reign followed before Sheamus dropped the gold back to Roman anyway. Number 12, Daniel Bryan. This moment can be seen as the opposite of Sheamus's cash-in. It was far less exciting in terms of action, with Bryan simply pinning a semi-conscious Big Show to win the World Heavyweight title. But the wider storytelling was superb, and actually played a vital role in the development of Bryan's character. Despite being a babyface, the internet darling took advantage of his friend's moment of weakness, even after promising to save his cash-in for WrestleMania. To top it all off, he celebrated like he just won a handicap match against Hulk Hogan and Goldberg. This started a wonderful, slow descent into heeldom, with Brian's ego becoming more inflated on a weekly basis. It also helped popularize his now iconic yes chant, and directly led to the infamous 18 second loss to Sheamus at WrestleMania, both factors in his eventual mega push a couple of years later. Sometimes wrestling's at its best when it keeps the storytelling simple, a good guy overcoming the odds to beat an evil villain. But sometimes more subtle angles can be just as compelling, if not more so, and Brian's cash in is a perfect example, even if it didn't seem like much of the time. Number 11, Alexa Bliss. We're slap bang in the middle of our ranking now, so it's fitting that our next cash in is a textbook example of how to do it. In fact, after watching Money in the Bank 2018, we're convinced that Alexa Bliss is a tactical genius. Get her on Game of Thrones alongside Peter Dinklage, they'll sort out the Seven Kingdoms in no time. Having won the briefcase earlier in the night, there was no sense in Alexa waiting very long to use it. Ronda Rousey was surely about to win the Raw Women's title from Nia Jax, and trying to take the belt from Ronda would be about as easy as cash in on an actual tiger, and also the tiger knows judo. So instead, Bliss stopped the title change from happening. With Nia caught in an armbar, Alexa attacked Rousey with the briefcase, causing the match to be thrown out. She then beat down both women for extra safety, before cashing in and putting the champ away with a couple of moves. Of course, she would later get absolutely decimated by Ronda at SummerSlam, but you win some, you lose some. Number 10. Edge. If there's ever been a superstar tailor-made for the Money in the Bank briefcase, it's surely the ultimate opportunist himself. It wasn't his only cash-in, but Edge's 2007 victory was particularly audacious because he didn't even win the briefcase the proper way. He convinced Mr. Kennedy to put it on the line before beating him to become a two-time winner of the contract. Just like his first cash-in, which we'll get to later, Edge didn't let this opportunity go to waste. A few days after winning the briefcase, he showed up on SmackDown to take the World Heavyweight title from the under. Undertaker. Now, it may seem as though Undertaker is in the same bracket as John Cena and Ronda Rousey, the category of absolutely do not cash in on this person, but Edge used a tactic that many briefcase holders have copied in the years since. That tactic is known as let someone else beat up the champion first, preferably more than one person, actually. Taker had just survived a grueling cage match against Batista, but found himself further beaten down by an angry Mark Henry. This left the door open for Edge to claim his prize, though he did have to hit the spear first just to finish the dead man off. Number 
Number 9, The Miz. Some cash-ins just feel as though they mean more to the new champion, and that's certainly true in this case. The Miz's transition from reality TV to the wrestling business wasn't an easy one. He was infamously kicked out of the locker room for spilling chicken crumbs, which is obviously the most heinous crime someone can commit. But Miz proved his worth and earned respect over the course of a long, hard grind. A grind even Tony Hawk would be proud of, because Tony Hawk is a famous skateboarder, and a grind is a skateboarding maneuver. I'm down with the kids. Miz's journey from zero to hero was completed in 2010, when he cashed in on Randy Orton. It was a bad day at the office for Randall Keith. He was ambushed by the Nexus before his title defense against Wade Barrett, but managed to retain with the help of Large Match Jonathan. But his night was not over yet. Miz picked the perfect moment to cash in on a weakened Viper, but the match still lasted a few tense minutes. Finally, the awesome one was able to connect with the skull-crushing finale, ending Randy's reign, and finally cementing his place in wrestling history. He'd even go on to defend the title in the main event of WrestleMania, although the less said about that match, the better. Dwayne. Number 8, CM Punk. Before he was the human embodiment of a smarky message board, CM Punk was a hungry up-and-comer, having recently jumped to Raw from ECW. Okay, yes, in reality, Punk was far from the plucky little emo babyface WWE portrayed him as. He already had a fearsome indie background under his belt, including epic battles with Samoa Joe and Chris Hero, as well as one of the best storylines in the history of independent wrestling. Despite starting afresh in WWE, it didn't take long for success to find Punk. He won the ECW Championship before long, and captured the World Heavyweight title after just one week on the flagship show. The man he defeated was Edge, a perfect choice given the circumstances. Edge was the original Mr. Money in the Bank, a cunning heel who used the briefcase to catch his opponents at their most vulnerable. Because of that, it was particularly sweet to see the rated R superstar undone in exactly the same way. Having been beaten down by Batista, Edge was powerless to stop Punk from taking his title courtesy of a single go to sleep. Even more ironically, Edge had only shown up on Raw to gloat about SmackDown holding both world titles. Adam, mate, you should have just stayed at home. Number 7, Dean Ambrose. Imagine if a horde of rabid Shield fans got together and booked a cash in. That's basically what happened at Money in the Bank 2016, but wait, it was actually good. We promise. Come back. Yes, on the surface, this may have seemed like an excuse to have all three former Shield members hold the WWE title in one night, but it was actually a clever, layered piece of storytelling. First, let's take a look at what happened. Having recently returned from injury, Rollins targeted Roman Reigns and actually beat the big dog clean, regaining the best he had been forced to vacate the previous year. But after celebrating for a matter of seconds, Seth was immediately taken out by a vengeful Dean Ambrose. The lunatic fringe had only won the briefcase earlier in the night, becoming the second superstar to cash in on the very same show. It's nice to see that he was inspired by Kane, as we all are at some point in our lives. Hashtag we love you, Kane. But this wasn't just a big sexy shield fest. It was also an example of nuanced long-term booking. In cashing in on Rollins, Dean finally got revenge for the breakup of the Shield a couple of years prior. It's also called back to Seth's first world title win, but we'll get to that shortly. Number 6, CM Punk. At the time of recording, CM Punk is the only superstar to win consecutive Money in the Bank ladder matches. But the Punk that cashed in on Edge was very different to the man who screwed over Jeff Hardy the following year. Once again, the Rated R Superstar was involved, this time losing his World Heavyweight title to Jeff in a great ladder match. It was a lovely feel-good moment, one immediately ruined by the Straight Edge Superstar. Punk, what are you doing? You're supposed to be a babyface! Someone think of the children! Like Daniel Bryan's 2011 cash-in, this would set a slow heel turn in motion, with Punk gradually embracing a more sneaky and ruthless side of his personality. We also have to mention how good the actual match was, even though it only lasted a minute. This was maybe the greatest short cash-in of all time, packing several swerves into a few seconds. Hardy kicked out of Punk's go to sleep before almost pinning his opponent with a shock inside Cradle. After a moment of near panic, Punk was able to put away Jeff with a second GTS, beginning his descent into cult leader madness. Number 5, Randy Orton. Jack, I don't really want to do it. You've got to do it. Got to give us what we want. Uh, give the people what they want. They want to hear it. Done it to death. No, they still love it. They always love it. Give Jack us what we want. Jack give us what we want. Give us what we want. Okay. Na 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 na. Randall, Randall, Keith, Randall, Keith, Randall, Randall, Keith. 
Sometimes watching WWE, it can feel as though the heels win too often, after decades of the McMahons trashing their own talent, and Brock Lesnar holding the Universal title for what felt like forever. But the opposite would be just as bad. Imagine if the good guys won all the time. It would be fun at first, but after a while, the monotony would start to set in. I have exactly the same issue with classic wizard song, I wish it could be Christmas every day. That would be rubbish, other Christmas songs are available. If Daniel Bryan had escaped from SummerSlam 2013 with the WWE title, it would have made his eventual win at WrestleMania 30 a lot less special. That's why we've ranked Randall Keith's sneaky, sneaky cash-in high on our list. Not because it was a feel-good moment, but because it was very effective. It came after Bryan had gained one of the biggest wins of his career, pinning John Cena clean to win the title. But as he celebrated, special guest referee drilled the new champ with a pedigree, allowing the new authority Golden Boy to stroll down and cash in. Did he hit an RKO? Absolutely not. Bryan had taken the mighty pedigree. Orton could have just pinned him the next night on Raw, and he'd still stay down. Number 4. Dolph Ziggler At first glance, the Money in the Bank concept looks tailor-made for sneaky heel victories. Their opponent can be tired, beaten down, or even unconscious, allowing for the cheapest of title wins. But it can also be used to give a bad guy a taste of his own medicine, with a beloved babyface cashing in to the shock and delight of everyone in attendance. That's exactly what happened when Dolph Ziggler cashed in on the Raw after WrestleMania 29, except he wasn't a face, and his opponent wasn't a heel. And everybody still wanted him to win. Ziggler that is, not his opponent, who was a babyface. Are you following? Good. World Heavyweight Champion Alberto Del Rio had beaten Jack Swagger at WrestleMania, but was forced to wrestle him again the following night. Having survived a handicap match against Swagger and Zeb Coulter, Del Rio was exhausted. Understandably so, Dirty Dutch is an absolute machine. The pop when Ziggler's music hit has become one of the signature Roar After Mania moments, and this was back when the Roar After Mania was good. His intense entrance alongside AJ Lee and Big E Langston will go down as one of the best moments of his career, as well as the victory that followed. Number 3. Rob Van Dam RVD vs John Cena is the best full-length match in the history of Money in the Bank cash-ins, although it doesn't have very much competition, we'll admit. Even so, this moment was a fantastic one. Having won the briefcase, Van Damme announced his title shot ahead of time at the upcoming One Night Stand event. Despite sacrificing the element of surprise, he gained a huge advantage in the form of a rabid ECW crowd, one of the biggest anti-Cena gatherings ever. In real life, we mean. Forums and subreddits don't count. The match was a good one, maybe not perfect, but the action was elevated by an incredible atmosphere. It also popularized the If X Loses We Riot sign, which would crop up again in WWE, most famously during CM Punk's match with Cena at Money in the Bank 2011. It didn't even matter that standard wrestling convention went out of the window towards the end. This was ECW after all. A handsome and mysterious stranger interfered in a motorbike helmet, drilling Cena with a spear and revealing himself to be the champ's arch nemesis, Edge. This helped RVD to victory, with Paul Heyman counting the pinfall instead of the the actual referee, and not a single person in the building cared. Number 2. Edge If the original Money in the Bank cash-in hadn't been so perfect a moment, we may not have seen the concept catch on for as long as it has. Fortunately for WWE, they absolutely nailed it first time around. John Cena had just defended his WWE title in a brutal 30-minute Elimination Chamber match, surviving all-time greats such as Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle, Kane, and the masters of cool, Chris Masters and Carlito. That sounds silly, but they actually did improve the match with their sneaky heel tactics. Good for them. Lying battered and bloodied inside the ring, Cena was met by Vince McMahon, who strode onto the stage and announced that Edge would be cashing in the first ever Money in the Bank contract. So many things about this moment were perfect, from the way it suited Edge's opportunistic character to the way Cena kicked out of the first spear, almost sending Edge off the deep end. The rated R superstar was able to keep his composure and pick up the victory, winning his first WWE Championship in the process. The immediate aftermath of an elimination chamber might seem like an obvious time for a cash-in, but it's important to remember that this had never happened before. Even in 2019, it would be an effective moment, but in 2006, it was sheer genius. Number 1. Seth Rollins It may seem predictable for us to claim that the biggest cash-in of all time is also the best, but sometimes the obvious answer is also the right one. For almost a decade, WWE had resisted the temptation to book a cash-in on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. In 2015, when the inevitable finally 
finally happened, their patience paid off in spades. Against all odds, despite an unpopular build-up, the main event of WrestleMania 31 proved to be a massive success. The crowd didn't particularly want Brock Lesnar to retain the title, but they take anybody over Roman Reigns at this stage of his career. So WWE were faced with a lose-lose situation. Either keep the title on Lesnar, an unimaginative move at best, or force an incredibly unpopular title change. How on earth would they get out of this one? Enter Seth Rollins. Instead of waiting for a winner to cash in on, the man who broke up the shield sprinted down the ramp mid-match, changing the WrestleMania main event on the fly. Despite his heel status, fans went absolutely crazy for the swerve, cheering Rollins on as he snatched the title from Brock and Roman's clutches. This booking decision wasn't just great as a standalone moment, it also shaped Seth's future, plunging him into the depths of villainy before his eventual redemption story and the reunion of The Shield. Incredible stuff. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.